everything so that it's easy to find as we work. Okay, so first things first, we have a bundle of at least four sticks. It's uh, sometimes helpful to have more than four sticks to choose from just to have options, and they should be about a foot and a half each, foot and a half long each, or half a meter each, and then some twine or string, any color is fine, because it's, it really is going to be covered up, it's not going to be very visible. Then we have our evergreen branches none longer than our sticks, but we do have a few that are almost as long as our sticks. Um, we have some soft needle branches, some hard needles, so that we can combine them. And then we have some branches from a sage bush, sage or lemongrass, or another fragrant herb, lavender, all of those are so good on a wreath. And also juniper branches are good with the berries. It's always nice to have a few berries on your wreath or something with red berries. Even a little holly if you can find it. But for now we just have our evergreens and our sage. And that's okay, that'll make perfectly, perfectly fine wreaths. And the sage just smells amazing.
option if we if we didn't have twine we could use beading wire beading wire looks pretty and like silver and gold beading wire it's shiny and bendy it's really easy just to wrap it over everything you've laid out rather than tying on every piece bit by bit so we could take that shortcut, but for now, let's keep tying on each piece bit by bit. And maybe, maybe we can also add a few that are tied on with beading wire, beading wire, jewelry wire. Next we have to look over these sage branches and pull off any dead leaves, any brown leaves. It's okay if they're a little dry, but let's try to keep it try to keep it looking green as far as the sage goes. And the evergreen as well. The evergreen should be green. So let's take these branches and pull off any brown needles or brown sections. Yeah. The branches aren't too thick, so we can just snip these off with scissors.
so now we can make the frame for the wreath. And for the frame, we're going to fasten three of the sticks together in a triangle with the twine. a circle. So now we're going to start tying evergreen branches to the sticks. And we're going to layer them and overlap them and angle them so they start to move in the shape of a, of a circle. And it does help actually to lay everything out to kind of see good. And then after that you can take everything off and start tying on pieces bit by bit. And we're going to sort of tuck the sage branches in between the evergreen ones. Layer them in there so the leaves are sticking out but the branch, the naked branch, is not is less visible, I should say.
comes from the same old Germanic root word as writhe. We usually hear the word writhe to mean to twist one's body in pain or while dancing, for example. But the old meaning, the old Germanic word means to braid, to coil, to twist, to weave, because the first wreaths you see were made by twisting dry stalks together, stalks from the harvest, stalks of grain or whatever crop had grown. This is a story my grandparents told me about how the wreath came to be. And it starts with the story of the sun. The sun would rise and set, rise and set, rise and set every day. Every day it would shine on a particular part of the earth, and the crops would grow and stretch out their necks, and people would sing the praises of the sun. But many, many years went by and people stopped singing the praises of the sun. They simply gathered their crops and moved on. So the sun slowly started to fade away. Up until then, it had always been summer, never a winter. But as the sun withdrew, coming out for less and less time each day, the leaves began to turn red and gold and brown and fall to the ground. The earth grew hard and cold. The air grew cold. It began to snow rather than rain. And as the longest night approached, that's when some of the people realized that they had been taking the sun for granted, and that if they didn't do something, summer, spring, may never come back. So they gathered their materials, their sticks, their evergreen branches, and their twine. And they made many wreaths to hang on their doors. Circles in the shape of the sun to welcome the sun back, to call the sun back, to make sure the sun knows how much we cherish them. So much. And how much we need their warmth and their light. We don't take the sun for granted. And so, after the longest night, when the sun rose, they saw upon every door brilliant green wreaths in the same shape as the sun. The sun was very pleased and from then on started to linger in the sky, stretching out the days longer and longer. Soon the bugs and the animals began to wake up. The 
trees begin to bloom, and the first of the spring seeds begin to sprout. pretty good. Good job. Good job. Your wreath looks better than mine, actually. Well, I like it better than mine. <laughs> Alright, what do you say we hang these up? Outside. Yeah. Sounds good. 